Compile time type versus run time type. Let's make an animal class. Let's make a dog that inherits from animal. No big deal. Uh, I'm going to go down here and say animal A gets new dog. And if you've done any fair share of object-oriented programming, you know that since dog inherits from animal, then A can reference a dog because uh, dog inherits from animal. All right, let me let me change this up a little bit. I'm going to say dog D gets A. All right, is that a legit assignment? You're probably seeing the red squigglies and saying, well, it doesn't look legit, but I think it should be legit. What's, what is A's type? That's the magical question. What is A's type? And we look at this and say, you know, I can see it's a dog. You're instantiating it to a dog. We're assigning it to a dog. So what's the red squiggly all about? Let's let's uh, build this. Control Shift B. Get our error messages up here, and it says, "Hey, um, I cannot implicitly convert an animal to a dog. An explicit conversion exists. Are you missing a cast? And you can go look at my casting videos if you want to understand the difference between casting and conversion and that kind of thing. But cannot implicitly convert an animal to a dog. Well, what do you? It is a dog. What's your problem? Convert it to a dog for me. Well." We need to look at this code file as a compiler does. All the compiler knows about A is that it's an animal. Right? A doesn't reference this dog until we run the code. Okay, new is actually an operator. Right? New goes out and creates RAM and puts a dog out there and that kind of thing. This code I've just highlighted here will not execute until runtime. Right? So as the as far as the compiler is concerned, this is off the screen. The compiler can't see it. Yeah, the compiler will generate the code to do this, but that still executes at runtime. So all the compiler can see is animal A. A is an animal. We're trying to assign that to a dog. Okay, now, what if I came here? You know, I'm going to comment this line of code out. Oh, that's kind of long. But what if I said animal A gets new animal? Right, which doesn't make sense. I mean, animal is kind of abstract here. We could... We could change it up. Let's let's do a cat. I'll add a cat here. I did Control L, Control V to copy and paste those lines real quick. I'm gonna say new cat. All right. Well, well now we know. Yeah, that shouldn't work. That shouldn't work. But but as far as the compiler is concerned, you know, A A could reference a dog. It could reference a cat. I don't know until runtime. All right. Even though we can see out here, it wouldn't work in this case. But what if I commented this line of code out and brought this one back in, and we know. This one is referencing a dog out here. Okay, even though we know at runtime this is totally fine, this is legit. The compiler says all I see is animal A at runtime. A could be an animal, it could be a dog, it could be a cat. So this could probably work if it's a dog. It would work just fine, but I don't know that. All I know is it's an animal. All right, the runtime type varies. It could be a dog, it could be a cat. So the compiler says, if you really know what you're doing, feel free to throw a cast in here. And, and we do. We know it's a dog. Let me I'm gonna bring that back in. I'm tired of scrolling sideways. Let's bring that back in. We know it's a dog. Okay, so say, yeah, yeah, it's a dog. It's a dog. Let me get rid of this line here. Control L. Run it. Everything works just fine. But say we don't know what we're doing. Say, hey, yeah, it is going to be a cat. Okay, the compiler's still happy. He says, oh, if you know what you're doing... Sure, a, a, if A is a dog, this cast will work at runtime. Run it, and it blows up saying, Oh! This is the runtime, the CLR, the .NET kicking in saying, Well, yeah, the compiler was happy with it, because in some cases, yes, it's true that an animal could be a dog. But in this case, you screwed up, invalid cast, no dice. Okay, there's some type safety, the strongly typed, managed feel of .NET coming through. Let me, uh, watch this, watch this. Let's, uh, var Randy. I like Randy. Let's get Randy in here. He's going to be a new random, generate some random numbers for us. And I'm going to say bool, random bool. Yes, hey Randy. Uh, give me a, give me a number, mod that by two. Is that equal to zero? If it is, then our random bool will be true. Otherwise, it'll be false. So, nice quick way to get a random boolean if you want a random boolean. Just Get it, give me a 0 or a 1, and if it's 0, then it's true, otherwise it's false. So we're going to get a random bool in here, and then I'm going to say, hey, random bool, random, oh, come on, random, random bool, ternary, okay, this is like a if statement, but it's an expression, it'll return a value. Sometimes, uh, let's return a dog, 
Let's return a dog. And other times, let's return a cat. All right, now the ternary is kind of freaking out, saying, well, do you want me to return a dog or a cat? So I'm going to trick the ternary operator and say, hey, you know what? Just treat them both as animals. Let's explicitly upcast them to animals. I don't necessarily have to do this one on the right, but I will, just for consistency. Upcast them to animal. Give me an animal, and I'll assign that to A. So now, let me ask you, what is A's compile time type? We can look at it and say, okay, well, the compiler can see that A is an animal. All right, good. Good. All right, so the declared type, it's this that the compiler can make sense of. The, this won't run until runtime. All right, the compiler can look at this at compile time, but the compiler does not, no, especially in this case, especially in this case, but in any case, the compiler will not make any assumptions about what's going on the right of this assignment right here. Let me ask you, what is A's runtime type? Okay, before, when we did uh, animal A gets new dog, you could tell me. You could say, yeah, I know a runtime that's going to create a dog. But now you can't tell me. Okay, this is going to be a random bool, and we won't know that Boolean value until we actually execute this code. Run it. Okay, and since sometimes it'll be a dog, sometimes it'll be a cat. And so this will not always work, and now we can realize, hey, yeah, I can see why the compiler has a problem with this, because if the compiler can't really make an analysis about what's going on on the right, then sure enough, yeah, this is going to explode sometimes, because sometimes we'll get a dog, sometimes we'll get a cat. I ran it that time. We didn't get an error, so that was a dog that time. Let's run it again. Oh, look at that. Look at that. We got, ah! Ah. I debugged the program I created, the bug. What are you talking about? Uh, that time it was a cat, and so the the cast failed, so I hope that clears the mud with compile time versus runtime. I remember when I was a brand new programmer hearing compile time and runtime all the time. It, well, they're both times. I mean, it takes when I hit Control Shift B, it's pretty fast here. But if I had a really big project, compile compiling could take a long time, and so you really feel the effect of compile time there. And then if I did like a wall true here, if I wanted to do something stupid, and then I ran this and. And uh, you can see, hey, my, my computer, well, it didn't blow up, so we got a dog that time. But now we're just wall chewing, and we're having a good long run time now. This is running. Okay, compile time type versus runtime type.